Well, welcome everybody. Um, before we go, uh, uh, any any further, we have some folks that might have to leave, but they wanted to hear the story about the new the new artwork. Uh, it is the same artist as the uh, as our current label that we have, and uh, it's David Berkman. He's in Portland, and I uh, met him. I was asked how we how we ran into David. I can actually I'm turn this off. I don't have to fight the AC fan. We met David. Uh, I was actually doing a first Thursday. It is still first Thursday, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. uh -huh. It's been a while, about you know, 12 years since I've done first Thursday. So, uh, we like being out here in the valley. Uh, but I did a first Thursday with a friend of mine, Sergio Luca. I don't know if you guys know who Sergio is. He was the guy who created uh, uh, the Northwest uh, String String uh, Ensemble. But uh, oh. and he held the Cascade Music Festival that's been in the set since the 70s on the on the coast. He's out of, he's from Houston, Texas, actually, uh, at Rice University. But anyhow, he's a lover of art. And he dragged me through uh, through all of the uh, galleries one Thursday. And we saw a piece of work by this fellow um, that was just amazing. It reminded me a lot of, of Daumier. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the work of Daumier from the 1850s. He was a cartoonist in Paris. Mm -hmm. And he did, uh, you know, these exaggerated figures and cartoonish figures, but just beautiful stuff. And uh, he was a friend of Van Gogh's. And anyhow, um, the piece I saw from David had that feel, especially a lot like the original, um, almost uh, Middle Ages sort of feel to it, look to it. And, um, and so just loved his work, met him. And we commissioned him to do, um, to do a piece for us. So the original piece that you, that you guys see on our label is uh, uh, what I'd asked him to do was an homage to um, the all of the migrant labor, seasonal workers that we have in the industry. I mean, as you guys know, I think, without them, I'm screwed. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I think uh, most of the hotel industry, and many restaurants, are screwed as well. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it was really interesting in the last governor's race and talking to both candidates for governor, I talked to them both privately, and we were talking about some immigration issues. Um, because at the time, I don't know if you guys were aware, but there was a bill that mm -hmm. was in the Senate that would have required every employer to track down every single person to verify that the sec Social Security was real. And mm -hmm. right now, I don't have to do that, neither do you. Yeah. I just have to provide a number. I have to be shown a number, and I write down a number. Okay? But this new legislation would have required me to prove that it was real, to, to research it, et cetera, um, which would be catastrophic. And, not, and I thought it was more, I thought that my industry would have been the most hard hit, like agriculture. But in talking with both of the governor candidates, they both said, no, 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 you're wrong. Uh, by far and away, it's the hotel restaurant industry that would be the most impacted. So a lot of you are here and you know that that's hmm. true. Um, still, uh, thankfully, that legislation was stayed in, a, in, a, uh, in San Francisco. Um, at their at the uh, federal judge in San Francisco stayed that and, but it's still out there uh, it's not done and you know if it ever does go through it's a very big deal for everybody uh, so we hope it doesn't anyhow back in 2000 when we m met David and we asked him to do this piece for us the original piece which is on the far end I, uh, I asked him to do an homage to our vineyard workers because Again, without them, we don't exist. There is no working class. There is no one out there. There are no high school students, no college. There's nobody out there to do the work, nobody. And, uh, and so I, I want to do an homage to them. And I said, I don't want you to, I want you to do a piece that shows the rigors of the work. <coughs> I want you to show how hard the work is. I want you to show winter pruning. When it's cold, it's wet, it's nasty, it is not pleasant. And this the group, you know, this the, this group of, of women and men that do the work are they're phenomenal, frankly. Uh, they do incredibly uh, detailed work in pruning, which is you really have to know what you're doing. Uh, you don't just go out there and start cutting. Uh, it takes a lot of experience, frankly, to do it well. And um, not that we're not there guiding, but uh, we are, of course. But these these guys know what they're doing. And, uh, and so he did. He didn't do flowers and deer and rainbows and so forth. He did. <laughs> <laughs> you know? There's enough of that out there. I want to 
to show that, that there's rigors of it, the difficulty, and he did. And so the, the, the piece, you know, and we say that on the back label. It's amazing how many people don't read the back label. Mm -hmm. You know, they just look at the front label and go, ha, that looks dark. And yes, it does. It does, but it was intentional. Mm -hmm. uh, if you read the back label, you know why. You know, so we encourage <coughs> people to read. But, uh, so um, here it is, ten, almost 10 years later. And uh, one thing I can say about that piece, now, if you guys remember our old label, well, that's the same label you have for the white wine still. It's, a, oh, it's very nice, very clean, very, very boring. And, not, well, whatever, the label, not the wines. And the, um, so this piece, while it's very controversial, and then people really either really, really like it, or they really, really don't. Um, but what they don't do is ignore it. No one ignores that label. It's always a subject of conversation when it's on the table. Yeah, we like that. We like to stimulate conversation. All wines and labels should do that, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but 10 years later, you know, we realize that, that uh, uh, when we have, particularly in a retail setting, when we have numbers of our wines on a, on a shelf, <laughs> um, it's difficult for the consumer. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, you guys in the retail understand. Difficult for us. I mean, well, for anybody, but, you know, for, the, for anybody, but it's difficult because the vineyard name is not that large. No. And so to distinguish the bottlings, you know, I mean, we, we're so close to everything that we just, you know, we know, we, we know where to look, number one, uh, for the differences, uh, but we're assuming too much, way too much. And, and so we decided that it would be really fun to approach David again 10 years later and say, hey, Let's, let's do a new piece for every vineyard we work with. So it has its own identity. And um, that's what, so that's what we did. And we decided the theme is essentially, mostly it's practices, either in the vineyard or the winery. And I think if you guys picked up a sheet, uh, somebody have that in your hand. And so we talk about what that, what that is, what we're, what we're showing uh, with each piece. And uh, anyway, we love what we did. This time we have a little more color <laughs> for us. That's a lot of color, um, and which is fun. Kind of be a little brighter, you know, and uh, uh, I'd be I'm a eye catching on the shelf, I think, and, and and fun. We wanted to get David down here. He just finished uh, the last piece, which was the one with the chef uh, over here in the middle. He just finished that last week, and we wanted him to come down here. But do you, does anybody know David? Here, uh, he's an incredibly shy and introverted guy. Mm -hmm. And as much as we tried to cajole him into coming down, he just wasn't going to do it. But he does do shows every now and then. 